All right, all right, all right. We are back here at Song of the Day, coming to you from the Rock Cave. I'm your host, Mark Pierce. It is Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. For those of you who are thirsty, it is Thursday. Uh, what are you guys listening to these days? Pandora? CDs? Cassettes? Music off your phone? Satellite radio? What are you guys jamming to these days? Is it always the same old stuff, or are you trying something new? Uh, we're going back... 50 years ago we're getting out of the 80s people what we're getting out of the 80s we're going back 50 years ago technically 51 years ago this summer uh the band yes are getting ready to record this song roundabout roundabout uh what a song this is but uh yes released in january of 1972 in the united states kind of a pre-release in november of 71 in the uk the single was cut to 3 minutes and 27 seconds. What? That does not do the song justice. That's what long format classic rock radio is for. Put on that 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Go take a bathroom break. Uh, this song so good. And the B-side. The B-side. We're going to talk about long distance run around. What? How can that even be too? Uh, English prog rock band. Like we said, this one went to number 13 in the United States. Uh, the album was Fragile, their uh, fourth studio album, uh, and it was the first single off of that one. Here they are, they're on the tour for the, the Yes album, and they're going from Aberdeen to Glasgow, and they say that they literally went through like 40 or so roundabouts, and that's where they got the uh, idea for this song. Certainly fueled by recreational activities, uh, they said it was magical. I bet it was. <laughs> Um, but anyway, that's where that came from. Uh, it had an acoustic beginning originally, acoustic guitar. Uh, I'm picturing something like uh, from the beginning from ELP, but uh, then they said, no, we need something bigger. We need a bigger entrance, and they were right. This song is so good. It, uh, it has weaved in and out of my musical taste. I didn't hear it until I moved to Connecticut in classic rock radio, so I didn't even hear it until 1984. Yes, you heard that right, 1984, sophomore year in high school. Uh, and I went through times where I liked it, didn't like it, tired of it, back to liking it. It's all good. I'm, it's good now. Uh, what a great song, I have to say. It's uh, it's awesome. And, uh, you know, it's basically one of those ones where you do have to hear the 8 minutes and 30 seconds, right? You can't hear that short version. And I do appreciate that prog rock music more and more as we go along. And again, I know there's fans out there who are probably going to have a story since I didn't hear about this so much later. I want to hear, you're probably wearing that fragile album out from your, you or yourself or your brothers. Uh, but uh, this is some good stuff. 90125 was my introduction to Yes. As far as being a big fan, I had a chance to see that concert. was denied, uh, but uh, I'm not bitter. And John Anderson, like I said, a singer, he did a side project. We talked about that in year one with Vangelis. Remember Vangelis? Which is Cherries of Fire. John and Vangelis was a record that came out and only two people bought it, myself and Sean Murphy. And we listened to this thing over and over again, especially the song Friends of Mr. Cairo, a very long song about gangster movies from the 1930s and 40s and uh, has snippets in there. And for whatever reason, uh, it, we are endeared to that song. And I think we're the only two on the planet who are endeared to that song. We'll post that below and see you guys can tell me what you think. But it's uh it's sentimental to me. Anyway, do loved John Anderson's voice. A lot to like about Yes. Again, B-side, long distance runaround. How can that be? That opens up and it sounds like a Grateful Dead song. Am I right? But I think I like long distance runaround a little better than roundabout. Just saying, I think, I, I think that's the case. And that was the B-side. I mean, that came in at under four minutes or something on that. Uh, but uh, what a record that is. What a, f what a single. You must have felt gypped up when you bought that 45 and you heard three minutes and 27 seconds of an eight-minute song. So then you went and splurged for the album and you were like, what? This is amazing. And then that 45 just went right out the door. I'm sure of it. I'm sure that's exactly what happened. Uh, I was an album guy. I don't know about you guys. I was an album guy. My brother was a cassette guy. Uh, and then I moved to cassettes a little bit later. But when it started off, I was an album guy. And remember, I told you guys recently, that was a really fateful mistake when it came to the police. Because I missed out on Murder by Numbers until I found out about it a little bit later. Um, but uh, what were you guys? Were you guys vinyl or cassette in the 80s? 
when you guys ordered those Columbia House records, twelve for a penny. What you know, you were ordering cassettes, right? But you could all you can you can order albums. You could have ordered albums. And then you had to wait, drop out, and re-enroll again after you got those bills. Early bill paying lessons there for you. Uh, but I am digressing. Yes, roundabout off of fragile, fifty years old this year. Great song. Let me know your yes stories below. I know there's some of you out there. Um, I do enjoy the music in this one, and particularly John Anderson's voice, but the guitars, the music, everything about it, it's all good. Uh, prog rock people are happy with today on Thirsty Thursday. Uh, listen to that, and before I get into prog rock timeage, uh, it's time to wrap it up. So whatever you're doing today, I hope it involves music as we roll into Octane Friday tomorrow. Love me, Octane Friday. Have a good one, and as usual, I'll catch you on the flip side.